It's interesting to see how far paleontology has come since it was first started. When it was first developed in 1822, paleontology was like the Wild West, fresh and unknown. It was, and still is, a mysterious field of science where you never knew what you were going to uncover when you started digging. But, while we know a lot more than we did 200 years ago, there are still a lot of mysteries that exist in the world of paleontology. One of these mysteries is perhaps best illustrated by a phrase paleontologists used to say ever since dinosaurs were first discovered. We will never know the colors dinosaurs had in life. Now, in 2024, we'd likely chuckle at this statement. Believe it or not, we do in fact know the colorations of several dinosaurs and prehistoric animals. We don't know what every single prehistoric organism looked like in life, but as of this video, we have at least 28 different avian and non-avian dinosaurs that have revealed their colors to us. But how do we know what colors these animals had when they were alive? Well, first, when said animal dies, the process of fossilization has to have the right set of circumstances in order to preserve soft tissue and certain cells. More specifically, pigment cells, or melanosomes, as well as the cells that contain them known as melanophores. In simple terms, you could think of melanosomes as a sort of scatter effect. When the melanosomes are more spread out in the melanophore, the colors it produces appear brighter. When the melanosomes are densely packed together, the colors appear darker. I'm condensing a hell of a lot, but generally, these are the cells that produce colors in every single organism, and everything needs to go right in the fossilization process for them to be preserved. The majority of animals that preserve these cells are animals that have feathers as I've mentioned before with birds and non-avian dinosaurs. In the studies that examine the melanosomes within these fossils, scientists have also compared them to the melanosomes of modern animals. This is how we've determined what colors these extinct animals were. And I'm sure you're tired of me ranting about cells like I'm a biology teacher, so let's finally look at what these extinct animals looked like when they were alive. One of the first dinosaurs known to be preserved with color cells was Cynoceropteryx. This animal was a compsognathid theropod from China and was one of the first dinosaurs ever discovered with feathers. After observing the melanosomes within these feathers, scientists found that Cynoceropteryx had a light brown coat with a white underbelly, a striped tail, and a raccoon-like mask over its eyes. This coloration would help the small dinosaur blend into its forest habitat, while also making it look like a trash panda. Next, we have Anchiornis, a Chinese paravian that's related to trudontids, dromaeosaurids, and modern birds. Research shows that Anchiornis had a gray and black body with white stripes on their wings and a reddish-brown head crest. Some studies have even hinted at the possibility of regional differences in color across the Anchiornis genus, meaning that you'd see differences in color in this animal just based on where they lived. But not all of these animals had monochromatic colors, as a whole host of dinosaurs have preserved evidence of shiny, iridescent feathers. Kaihong, a relative of Anchiornis, was found to have a black body with shiny, hummingbird-like feathers covering the head, chest, and base of the tail. The four-winged dromaeosaurid Microraptor was found to be covered in iridescent bluish-black feathers, much like a modern crow or starling. The Eocene bird Eocaracius preserved evidence of iridescent blue body feathers with black feathers on the wings, necks, and tail. So, hey, if you have a partner that likes shiny things, give me a call and we can discuss a paleo art commission. But don't think that feathered dinosaurs are the only animals whose colors have been preserved. While incredibly rare, there are two dinosaurs with scales that preserve pigment cells. The first is Borealopelta, a notosaurid thyreophorin from Canada. In life, this animal had a reddish-brown body with a cream-colored underbelly for countershading camouflage. The primitive Ceratopsian Cetacosaurus was also found to have a countershading color scheme, 
However, this animal looked more like modern day deer and antelope than, say, a living pine cone. As you can see, there are a lot of dinosaurs that preserve the colors they possessed in life. And I haven't even covered all of them in this video. But does this mean we should be cautious when drawing other dinosaurs in paleoart? Well, not necessarily. Obviously, don't give dinosaurs unnatural colors such as neon blues or pinks. I believe the best way to draw dinosaurs in color is to base said colors off of modern animals. That may seem boring, but there are some animals out there with an incredible number of magnificent colors and patterns that could work for your own paleo art. From modern references, you could color dinosaurs whatever you want, as long as it makes sense. Take into account the animal's lifestyle and ecological niche. Look at animals that share a similar niche alive today. Think about areas where you could add some interesting colors. And of course, when you're drawing dinosaurs that we know the colors of, make sure you match those colors as closely as possible. And of course, most importantly, DON'T USE AI, YOU LAZY BUCK! But that is the end of the line for this video. Don't forget to like and comment on this video as it lets YouTube know that people like this content and want to see more from me. Also, thank you guys so much for 281 subscribers, oh my god. <laughs> I am actively working on more videos as we speak because you guys honestly deserve more. As soon as I stop procrastinating my summer courses. Well, that's it for now. See you around.